70, does practical mean that the 89 or so million people who are uninsured or underinsured in this country continue to suffer? Does being practical mean that we don't take steps in this country to deal with climate chaos and bring world leaders to bear? Does being practical mean that we continue to prop up a legal system that is unjust in every stretch of the imagination, that bears its weight down on black men and black women, and then by extension, if you are Hispanic or indigenous or poor? Does being practical mean that we don't say to the American people People that you deserve better than what you are getting, that's not the kind of practicality we want. Does practical mean that you hold fundraisers and wine caves with Swarovski crystals with bil billionaires who want to control this system? Does practical mean we continue to go with the status quo while 500,000 people sleep on the streets at night? That's not practicality. You've got to get to a practical place to make those changes. Stephanie, the elites in 1930 said the same thing about FDR. And he said, I welcome your hatred. These are the same people that if the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was still alive, when he stood up before he was gunned down and he said to this country, he said the evils of this country, militarism, materialism, poverty, and racism. Those are those same people. So now if President FDR had listened to those people, or if the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King had listened to those people, we would not progress as a nation. So every generation, we got the naysayers, baby. But what the folks of this country need, they need, they need somebody that's going to stand up for them. And so I reject, and so do the American people, the whole notion that you cannot say to a system that it must change and also push a dream and a vision that is bigger than what we have right now. Who wants somebody that's saying to the work -a day people of this nation, I'm going to run for office, but you're only going to get more of the same. That doesn't work. It's in the spirit of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who in his letter to the Birmingham jail yes. warned us, us being the black community, about white moderates. You know that FDR, the 1944 Economic Bill of Rights, what do the American people have a right to? A decent job, decent housing, uh, being able to take care of people when they have, uh, when they're unemployed or old age, disabilities. These are the things that FDR put forward and True. the elites or the corporate dims of his day came after him. You know, Nina referenced um, Dr. Martin Luther King before saying that uh, he said from the Birmingham jail that we should be um, concerned about white moderates. That's actually not what Martin Luther King said. What he said is he we should be that. worried about the about silence Dr. Martin of Luther white King moderates. Jr. What Are he, you kidding me? Nina? Wait, no, she's making he, a language point. What, you know, what he said was we should worry about the silence of white moderates. The white moderate wants things to be comfortable. And instead of focusing in on that, the bigger threat is not necessarily the white a KKK member, but more the white moderate that is more comfortable you with know keeping what? things don't, the same don't or pretending use, like there don't is Don't use no Martin Luther King against then, Joe then Biden. Deal, you, you don't have all, that. Nobody, you don't all, have that standing. First of all, I'm Hillary, sorry. You, you don't. don't. Don't tell me what kind of standing you, I have you, as a black woman in America. It, How dare you? You have a first lot of standing all, as a black woman in America. You don't have the standing to attack Joe Biden using Martin Luther King's words. I That's didn't attack anybody. You're taking it. You're taking it that way. Listen, don't dip into what I have to say about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. How dare you?